for a Hoop Jack podcast interview. If you guys don't know who he is, he is the host of the Hoop Jack podcast series. He's done interviews in the collegiate level for both men's and women's basketball. He also has done interviews with ex NBA players who's played um, who's played overseas and coaches that coach uh, basketball for the collegiate level as well. This is Chris Armstead, the host of Hoop Jack podcast. How's it going, Chris? It's going good, my man. Uh, glad it's Friday. Glad I mean it's mm-hmm. hot, but you know it's Friday. Gotta yeah, go do something tonight. Yeah, Sacramento. Honestly, like over near at Sacramento, it's for at least the summer. It's been super like all over the place. It will be rainy, and then it will be like just sunny, <laughs> or just it'll be like warm. It's very, um, I don't know. It's all over the place, but oh, uh, dude, it's humid. It's hot and humid. I let me look. Um, let me check out this temperature real quick, and yeah, I can get yeah, back yeah. to you because it's it feels like a lot today. Let's see, Sorry. it's. 97 right now 97 97 degrees but i'm guessing it feels like 107 i need to check the weather just to be just to be accurate um let's see but yeah oh 97 98 degrees on dude that's summer dude that's hot it is hot i remember like a few years ago it used to get like it can get hot like that in like sacramento and over like near that area but i mean some parts of california i know it depends on where you are i know sacramento can get hot the bay area can get really hot but it just depends on where but also like i would i went to bay area like a few like a week ago i'd want to say and like it was cold you know it, it, it's it's interesting it's a very like interesting area in terms of weather but hey let's get started with this um question so how did you get involved uh into like watching like slash playing sports um so that's uh that takes me way back i i got into it uh because of my grandfather he was a college tennis coach and a high school basketball coach within the boone north carolina vero beach florida area and he's trained um like professional tennis players and uh cup players and he got me involved with tennis and then I mean I I've been playing tennis for as long as I can remember um since I could pick up a racket Uh, I played middle school JV high school uh played at the collegiate level at division two Mm -hmm. division two um and I wouldn't trade that opportunity that I got because it's it's hard enough to make it out of to at least to the college level, much less, you know, get to where I was at. Um, it was interesting when I uh, got into sports. I got into, I still I, lo- I started to fall in love with the game of sports probably around uh, eight, nine, when usually kids are just figuring things out. Um, I think the first it, it got to me when I got my first video game. <laughs> Uh, um, you remember, oh, it was either 1999 or 2000 NFL Blitz. Oh, that's dope. Mm-hmm. That was probably my first intro to the sports games. Mm-hmm. And then it got into NBA jams, you know, NBA, uh, NBA street, NFL street, um, all that. And then MLB, you know, the show, a lot of these fun sports games, yeah. NCAA football too. Um, but my, my love for the game, you know, I'm also, you know, just a fan. Like I don't try to be like these other fans who are like aggressive and violent towards players. I mean, they, they got a job to do. They got, they're doing the best that they can with what they mm-hmm. got. And yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll hate, I, I, I won't like, I, I will hate the management. I won't hate the players because there's only so much they can do for a time mm-hmm. being, but I, I fell in love with the game with, with sports uh, for a long time and it's uh i my license plate even says sports so it's just the irony behind that so for a long time i man. yeah no i mean it, sports you know sports for me impacted me in so many ways but i was gonna ask so yeah you played in the collegiate level for tennis that was actually mm-hmm. one of my questions i put down because i'm i'm also a tennis player i'm not I, i'm not playing collegiate level or anything but i played in high school yeah and so i was gonna say yeah so what school did you play um college uh, tennis i played at? a I played a small division two school called um, the university of Virginia's college at wise. Okay. It was um, 
originally it was clinch valley college way back in the day but then uva kind of took it under its wing and kind of bought it in a sense and then it was a uva wise they were naia but by the time i got there it was division two uh Mm -hmm. we played uh mainly a lot of west virginia teams within uh the mountain east conference and it was great competition it was it was it was a great my freshman year it was a learning curve you know i had to learn how to play you know people from other countries learn how to play their game and uh learn how to adapt i knew i couldn't just play an all defensive game i had to go on the offense when i could and i by my sophomore and junior year, I, and even my senior year, I was probably the only, uh, like the only American within the top four, uh, because the top three were either, uh, Ukrainians or Eastern Europeans. And I was like number four or five, give or take. And then, um, by junior, senior year, I was, even though I was like three or four, I was the only one with like a, a winning record in singles and no, 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 no mention to any all conference teams, which was a bummer, but I, I take it in stride knowing I played the best that I could, even if my team, even if the team didn't, and yeah. there's only so much you can do because tennis is a matter of uh, it's a matter of patience and, you know, it's, it's a, all a mental game in an aspect because you lose one game, you beat yourself down. All of a sudden you're down five Oh in the set. And you're like, you don't know how you got there, but you got there. And, Mm -hmm. um, so it was a fun experience when I had the chance. I made, I made some lifelong friends. And, uh, what's funny is, um, yeah, I don't know if you've ever tuned in the show, a Jake who I usually have as, you know, that was going to be one of my questions. He wasn't my teammate, but he played against, one of the schools that we played against and me, him, a bunch of the other guys, like I was probably the only one on my team who actually tried to make friends with other team, other teams, because mm-hmm. I was just, you know, I, it, it's not that I didn't care about my teammates. It's I'm used to them and I just want to branch out and me and him got, we're good friends still to this day We there's no, no hate towards each other. Um, and no, even though he's no longer part of the show, I always w- hope, he's doing well maybe he can come back but yeah he's uh he was a great tennis player great guy um and still good friends to this day yeah so i was gonna like let's transition to that so i was gonna say i remember uh having jay badkins as your uh co-host for the show Mm -hmm. so how come he stopped um being the co-host for your uh for the hoop jack podcast Um, when you get older it's work um that's right Mm -hmm. work kind of comes in and it it was kind of for the both of us i mean i was i knew what he wanted to do with his life required all the attention of the world and i respect that full-heartedly um from the last time i talked to him he's trying to go to law school to become a lawyer i told him great i'm gonna need your help in the future (laughs) (laughs) your help in the future you need to be my lawyer but um no, I, I always I wish him the best of luck. I know him and his wife keep moving around the entire state of North Carolina uh, with his work, with her work. And I think without without him, it would have been really hard to get to the show where it was, because what I find interesting is a lot. You need that um, Stephen A to Max Kellerman. You need that Skip Bayless to that Shannon Sharp. You need someone to deflect who has a different opinion. He might have the same opinion. But it's also you're not just talking to yourself. I think that's why it was yin and yang. Um, and th- it felt good. But I understood and I respected, you know, he had he had to go. And I always tell him whenever you feel like you're ready to come back, you you have an open seat, my man. Um, and he's a good guy. Like I, I probably wouldn't have gotten to the point of the back and forth and the quality of the show without him and the way that we were able to kind of reach it more. So I always thank him for his help. Mm -hmm, Yeah. I I know whenever I've always listened um, to some of the episodes with you and Jake, um, it's great having that second person to come on the show because it's not you just talking about basketball and giving your opinions the whole time. It's someone can also um, give you a, a different opinion to uh 
to yours and they can you know my favorite honestly my favorite sports podcasts um are like ones where they debate and they get into right. an argument about whatever the topic is for nba right so it's like whenever that happens it's the i feel like it's a perfect um perfect type of episode and you, and you kind of and you kind of want that you want to be able to kind of have that debate with somebody because yeah. sometimes talking to yourself it's like it's a one-way street and it's kind of monotone very which is why i'm still on the lookout for a future co-host wherever they are you know it that opportunity comes you know i'm always open to anybody and it's you know i started this from the ground up and i know you know it's hard and it's, you know, it's always a challenge to kind of continue that level of progress, but, you know, um, I'll just see where it goes. I also like, I know um, even before you even started Hoop Jack, you've also have had uh, plenty of attempts to um, kind of give your thoughts in the NBA. Like, I think I've uh, scrolled through a little bit of your, your, your YouTube channel and it was, um, I think you and back in college trying oh, to sports corner. Yeah. Sports corner. And that was, that was an attempt. I think what, what I wanted to do in college was do the exact same thing I did now with the podcast, except start with UVA wise. But the problem was I kept having to go through the athletic department kept having to go through them can I interview this person can I interview that person and it would always be a it would always be a mismatch like wish wash with them because it, the NIL hadn't existed yet I couldn't just open freely talk to them I kind of had to go through all the background with that and it wasn't like an easy yes so eventually um yeah me and uh Malik had started that in college and uh, he was great on the show and I know that I think sports corner would have been, would have been cool to kind of eventually happen, but I think it, it just kind of died out with, I didn't know how to continue it. And I also think sports corner was just not an original name. It was not an original. I didn't feel right. And it kind of died mm -hmm. on where it was and it didn't hurt. Cause I hadn't put that much into it as I've done with this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I put of course. so much into this. And of course, I uh, know I'm seeing like I'm already seeing the progress um, of your uh, podcast just growing throughout time. I remember mm -hmm. at one point, even following you, you had like 20 followers. Now you're at like near 400. We're near 400, and it's taken a year of just the grind. And mm -hmm, what's interesting, people ask, "Well, how many episodes do you put out a week?" Uh, two, and they're like, mm -hmm, yeah. two. Like, you don't just do one. I'm like, no, because here's the thing. So much can happen in the NBA season during a week that one day is not going to do it, especially if it's on a Monday, because not a lot could happen on a Sunday, but plenty can happen Monday night, Tuesday, and Tuesday through Thursday and Friday that I just miss. And I miss that opportunity to talk about it. But I think also two episodes a week, plus with, you know, trying to find incredible athletes to talk to and mention our sponsor, our, our affiliates too, is a great opportunity to forget to get their brand out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's small podcast sports podcast. You, you mm -hmm. can't go like, obviously just once a week, you might have to go bump it up a little bit just because you're trying to be that first to get the news out or um, yeah, you're trying to be like the first a little bit to kind of like, bring that and then out to the and then i i kind of and then i kind of reflected after the first year when i because we had started we had broke we had started the first episode end of may of last year may 28th that's may my 28th, birthday may that 28th is, was the start was ground zero episode one and if you ever listen to that episode i didn't edit a single thing it was so bad i was just like man now that I look back at it, I was like, man, I got to learn how to edit out of that first episode. Yeah, no. I, didn't, it, I learned in episode two to edit and figure all that out. But it wasn't until later on that I think, OK, how can we add more to it? And I said, OK, well, why don't we try Hooper profiles, find mm -hmm. people to interview 
And then our first interview was with a kid named Danny Bannister, who I coach volleyball at Cape Henry, uh, who goes to Hampton, plays basketball there, uh, which was a start. And I didn't really talk about NIL because that had the deal hadn't broke yet. Um, and then our first pro athlete was Kevin Jones, who was an alumni of uh, West Virginia. Jake actually reached out to him. And I let Jake take control of that interview because Jake being from West Virginia, uh, that was his dream. It, that was just his opportunity to ask questions about that time and reminisce. Yeah. So it was great. Mm-hmm. And then I'd say about a hundred interviews later, we're still here over, over like 30 different schools and hundreds of athletes later. Mm-hmm. And then after the hundredth episode or even before the hundredth episode, I got the idea, well, how, what more could we do to add? And I said, well, what if we did Hooper reflections? What if we bring back some of their beginning interviews before the season started and see how they're doing and we've done about four uh four yeah i've tuned into this four right those. now mm-hmm. um we've had jc haynes who goes to muw we've had riley donahue who is heading to umbc after her time at auburn um sam ubazuno who's overseas and then cameron swartz who was a lethal threat shooter out of Boston college heading home to Georgia tech. And, and it's great how I remember these, but it's, um, and we do have another one this weekend. I have added it's, uh, uh, Andrew muse, who is a current member Let's of the go, sneak state, peek mm-hmm. after the, after their app state men's program. Mm-hmm. Um, last time I talked to him, it was around, around season time, a little bit before, um great kid okay, and yeah. looking forward to having him back on the show um but there's always uh, you want to try to improve and trial and error just to see okay how who would be willing to watch who would be willing to listen who would be willing to you know tune in cuz even if you tune into a few people chances are if they're new they're going to look back to see okay what has he done to kind of get to hear mm-hmm. and then people will listen i mean if they don't it's fine and well the funny thing is i i reach out and all my interviews i've reached out through instagram through email and i give them the if they if they want to do it i tell them great we'll set up a time of the date if they don't i try not to pressure it because it's like all right you know they're just gonna find me annoying and i'm just like all right i won't do it unless they respond but the journey has the journey is still on its way. Uh, over a hundred episodes so far, so mm-hmm. seeing how it goes for yeah. the summer, especially if the NBA season over, gonna have to find topics to talk about. Yeah. Um. So I've I've so I've like two questions I kind of want to ask. Um. So one of it was so what what was like one of your favorite interviews that you've ever enjoyed? Oh, there's so many. Um. We can name a few. It does not be one. Yeah, I think every interview that I've done with them, with these athletes, has been I've given them a hundred percent of my attention, a hundred percent of my effort to try to learn more about them. I think whether I get the opportunity to interview a coach and his lifetime or her lifetime through the game, I think you can kind of see. And when I interviewed Jeff Jones, who's the head coach of ODU. I kind of got to learn more about his path to what made him the coach that he is with his playing days at UVA against, you know, a time where Dean Smith was the coach at UNC and played against the Tar Heels at that time. We played, he coached at America university and then now at ODU he's built a successful program and just the legacy that he's probably going to leave behind to the Monarch nation and just kind of being local. I was able to actually do that interview in person. So that one's actually fun to get that opportunity. But like I said, every interview that I've done is been special and every interview, you know, I try to do the best that I can for them to get their net message out there, their brand out there, if they have one. And, um, 
make sure you know that, especially especially now with mental health at our forefront, that someone's listening because I want to make sure I want to be somebody there who can just listen. And you don't have to. I don't even have to talk. You can. I can just listen to what you're going through and try to help the best that I can. Yeah, that's really mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And and uh, one of my other questions. So. I know, uh, I don't know if you uh, remember this interview, you probably do, because you obviously love to interview athletes, but uh, Digna Stra- uh, Strahmane. <laughs> yeah. So overseas now, she played okay. at, um, she played at Georgia Tech. Yeah, Georgia Tech. Currently so. overseas at, um, with the, I think the Australian Basketball League. Okay. So I want to I- say the Australian Basketball League, I could be wrong. So for viewers that, um, don't know who she is. So she's a women's basketball player that played at Georgia Tech. And also she was on a video with a famous influencer named Kai Sinat. I did see that. Yeah. So um, with that, she actually started uh, to grow a little bit from that um, video. And so I was going to ask, like, how did you um, how did you get that interview and how um, how did you get the interview and how did you enjoy it and all and all of that yeah i just reached out instagram like i've done it with all my interviewees i reach out through instagram if they have an email that they want me to reach out to i'll do that too um what's interesting is i if if they are if they're an agency email i email it differently than what i have because i say the specific athlete who i want to interview and kind of go from there with her i just reached out through instagram and she reached back and it was great to kind of hear her story of kind of growing up in Latvia and playing pro with pro club teams and playing with the Latvia national team and getting the opportunity to come to the stage. She play, well, she started her college career at Syracuse with the orange and then eventually transferred to Georgia tech for her last few years and built a rep there. And then finally getting the chance to go overseas I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't – with influencers like that, it's a lot of – they're getting – I mean, when I watched kind of with him and the influencer video, it was more of he's just trying he, – he sees, you know – and and I'm not going to lie. She's a very beautiful girl, um, and she, you know, she's really nice and everything like that. Uh, it's just – he kind of – he's, you know, the way that he is. I'm not, he's just, uh, very excited, very, you know, extra about a lot of stuff. And I'm kind of, you know, it, 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 it's not really for me. Like I kind of wanted to just know her and her career. Yeah. But it definitely, I'll say this, it definitely put more eyeballs into who she is and how she's like a WNBA, like not WNBA player, sorry, like who played, uh, what is it? Uh, college basketball. Mm-hmm. and all that so i mean it, it it brought notoriety to her through him yeah um but like but i think it can either it can either be good or it can either be bad i think it's who it's whoever's watching it takes it the direction that they want to take it mm-hmm. with people who follow him it can be different than it actually people who get to know her you know what i mean okay. it's it's kind of a it, it's a yin and yang. It, mm-hmm, it, it, yeah. it might, some people feel a type of way and not, but I didn't think, I, I thought, you know, I'm interviewing her. She's a great basketball player. She's representing her, uh, her country and her family all well playing pro basketball. And even at the, her time at college and, whatever success that she has, I'm going to be happy for her and whatever success who I've had on the show happens to them. I'll be happy for them too, because they've worked hard for that. And hopefully, you know, my time will come. For sure. All right. Let's um, shift a little bit to yesterday Mm -hmm. of what happened in the NBA finals for us. It was yesterday. Maybe when this interview comes out, it'll be a few days, but so, yeah. So the warriors won the NBA finals, uh, 2022 championship right their fourth F- championship at their fourth championship in eight years i you can't say anything about them i think i think a lot of what i find interesting is where they were preseason ranked wise oh mm-hmm. they 
the the league did discredited them hardly. Yeah. I think the fact that they discredited them when Clay got hurt, they did not think Clay would be that big of a factor coming back. But I don't think people understand they won their first championship by the Splash Brothers. They won their second and third championship still by the Splash Brothers. And they won their fourth championship, the Splash Brothers, plus Wiggins, plus Poole, plus Porter Jr. Those bench role players did their job. Draymond yeah, did down. the best that he could, but he had a good the last game. The he role had a good players, last game. Mm-hmm. Yes. but mainly the role players, 100. percent The role players helped Steph and Clay. That was, and I think, I, and I think we got. And I think what we got to look at is with Boston. Is Tatum the leader of this team? Because here's here's my viewpoint. Jalen Brown played fantastic all six games. Jason Tatum played well four out of the six games. When you look at his compare his numbers net side by side with each other, Jalen Brown did his job. Tatum tried, but shooting shooting nights were off for him more than what Jalen Brown did. Jalen Brown did great. Al Horford was especially not there game two and game four. And then Marcus Smart was not there for a few games either. Yeah. I think Boston has a really good chance next year to come back if they keep that core. If they keep that core. Mm -hmm. So they keep that core. Yes. So my my issue from the whole series that I've seen from Boston, they did, they played amazing throughout. They Mm -hmm. had an amazing, one of the greatest uh, comeback stories in all of basketball. Right from you know the ten seed to now the number two seed, and people are saying one of the greatest defenses of all time now. But um, one thing I do notice with the Boston Celtics is the lack of depth when they go against these elite teams like the Golden State Warriors, right? Mm Because I mean they have Grant Williams and Derek White, but I feel like they need to have a better backup point guard in uh, better someone better than Peyton Pritchard. I don't think Peyton Pritchard was necessarily, you know, the, you know, not something you want to have as a backup for the Boston Celtics, especially during a finals game. And so with that in mind, it's just, don't get me wrong, they played amazing. But if if they want to really come back this upcoming, uh, this next year, especially you have to factor in an aging Al Horford, right? You, mm-hmm. you have to add a few more pieces to that bench to really – come back and um, come back again and try winning a championship. Because also you have to remember, too, in the second round of that playoffs, the Bucks didn't have Chris Milton, mm-hmm. and they went to seven. So what will happen, you know, next year, if Chris Milton comes back, it can, you know, factor uh, – it can definitely um, factor the Boston Celtics' chances of mm-hmm. not making it to the finals, especially when he comes back. Absolutely. I it's think just, and, I look, and looking at the bench score for both teams, Boston only had five bench points. Boston had five bench points compared to Golden State had 21 off the bench. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. And five of their players did not play. Due to coach's decision. Um, and only two t- didn't play due to coach's decision for Boston, but. It's still – that's not a good shooting night. Uh, let's see, Derek White went one for six from the field. Yeah. Pritchard went 0 for two. Stauskas went 0 for one. Williams went one for two. And then when you look at the Warriors, Poole went five of 12, three of, three of eight from behind the arc, 15 points. And Gary Payne went two for six from the field, two free throws for six points. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. – and Kevin Looney didn't have anything, but he only took two shots, and Iggy didn't even play. At all. He only played for a minute. He kind of just walked on. But I think it's, you know, it is about the bench. When Golden State has a good starting starting five and then a good supporting cast with it, how could they not win? Well, also, I feel like ways to win championships in, in this league, too. Uh, one of it obviously is have a very great, you know, a good star player, you know, supporting that star player with good, um, with good pieces. Um, and then obviously be great from the offense and defensive standpoint, but also one thing too is depth. 
that bench that comes with it. And I mean, one example is the Toronto Raptors. Look at their bench when they uh, went against the Golden State Warriors. Obviously, you know, the Warriors were hurt. And like, if they were healthy, they would have won. But look, they at least made the finals. And look at that team in 2019, the Toronto Raptors. Their bench, they had Van Vliet. Um, OG Ananobi was coming off the bench. Norman Powell was coming off the bench. Um, the center, I believe, was – I know it was not Yaka Pertl. He got traded. Um, Serge Ibaka. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, but when you look at those names, Serge Ibaka was a defensive threat, the Thunder at the time. Van Vliet coming off the bench played monster minutes, monster scoring in a playoff crunch time. OG Ananube is now a star for – the Raptors and Powell, I believe, is also a star right now. But I think he's with um, he's with, is he, uh, is he with no, Portland. Not Portland. No, he's LA, with Portland. LA Clippers. The Clippers, right? Mm-hmm. He's he's. I mean, they've they're becoming stars on other teams. I think you know when you look at that roster, people say that was the worst team to ever win a finals. Wow. But I think you can't you can't look at it like that. You can look at the start the starters would be like, they don't look strong, but then you look at the whole team as a core. They, they won against a team that was at, at one time, they won 73 games. They won 73 games one year. Granted they lost, but they had the best regular season record of all time, beating the bulls record of 72 wins. I think people forget that, but it's all about the whole team as, as a unit, not as just the starting five. Exactly. And so, I mean, look – and l- just look at that bench. I mean, like like I said, depth is everything in basketball. You have to have – to really compete, you have to have good depth in the league. And, I mean, the Suns also, even though they, they lost the game seven against Dallas, they had amazing – like, they had amazing bench players too to go along with the starting five. So, I know they're getting a lot of hate right now, but – um, it, it's just that's another team too because they also went to the finals as well last year and look at the depth that they had as well coming on with that team. And so it's just my point but when, being. But when teams decide to improve versus stay stagnant, that shows you something. Mm-hmm. Like the Warriors got better. Dallas got really good. Um, the Celtics got better. You know, granted Middleton got hurt, but – it was still, you know, it wasn't close. It would it have made that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. Time you don't know. Like it could, it could not have. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll might we might have to wrap it up here because we're running out of time. Um, thank you, Chris, for hopping on. I really no problem. It really means a lot. This is gonna be my first um interview I'm gonna just... upload on YouTube. So it's an honor to have you come on. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm.